Okay, so in this video we are going to talk about systems of two qubits. So, continuing with our running example, imagine that we have a hydrogen atom. Um, we want to use the ground or excited state of the electron to represent a bit of information. So now since there are two such electrons, we can represent two bits of information classically. So there are four possible states of the two electrons, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. So now, again, by the superposition principle, the quantum state of these two electrons is in general a superposition of all four possibilities. So alpha 0, 0, 0, 0, plus alpha 0, 1, 0, 1, plus alpha 1, 0, 1, 0, plus alpha 1, 1, 1, 1. So what this is saying basically is that the two electrons don't make up their minds which of these four classical states they are in. And each of these four classical states has its own private amplitude, a complex number. So alpha sub x is a complex number for each x among these four possibilities. And the sum of alpha x magnitude squared is 1. So if you add together the sum of the magnitudes squares of these four amplitudes, you get 1. So it's a normalized state. Now again, what happens if you, if you measure the state of these two qubits? Okay, so if you, if you look at these two qubits, they quickly make up their minds, the electrons quickly make up their minds whether they're in ground or excited state. And so you end up seeing zero, zero with probability exactly alpha zero, zero magnitude squared. And once again, the very act of making the measurement disturbs the system, and so the new state, psi prime, would just be zero, zero. Similarly, for the other four possibilities, the probability of zero, one would be alpha zero, one magnitude squared, and so on. So for example, let's say that the state of our system was 1 over 2 plus i over 2, 0, 0, plus 1 over 2, 0, 1, minus i over 2, 1, 1. So now the probability that we see is 0, 0 would be exactly a half. The probability we see 0, 1 would be a quarter. And the probability we see 1, 1 would also be a quarter. OK, but now we could ask a different question. Suppose we have the same qubit state. So suppose we had, we had the state of the two qubits as, OK, uh, well, let's, let's say it was uh, plus 1 half, 0, 1, plus i over 2, 1, 1. Now, what happens if we were to measure only the first qubit? What would we see? So let me, let me do this in full generality, and then we'll work through the example. So let's say that in full generality, this is our state. What's the probability we see 0 when we measure just the first qubit? Well, the answer is it's the same as the probability we see 0 on the first qubit if we measure both qubits. So what is that? Well, these are the two cases in which we'd see a zero, so it would be alpha zero zero magnitude squared plus alpha zero one magnitude squared. Here's the more interesting question. What's the new state? And the answer is very elegant. It's what you do is cross out all those parts of the superposition that are not consistent with the answer you got. So you got an answer of zero, so you cross off these two possibilities. This is what the new state should look like, what's left over, except that it's not normalized. So you just normalize it. So you'd get this state, which is not normalized. But now to normalize it, you divide by square root of alpha 0, 0 magnitude squared 
plus alpha zero one magnitude squared, which is also the square root of the probability with which you saw this particular outcome. Okay, so let's let's carry this through for the for this example. What's the probability you see zero? Well, it's this thing magnitude squared, which is one half. Right, the magnitude of this this complex number squared is one half squared plus one half squared, which is one half, plus this amplitude squared, which is a quarter. So the probability you see zero is exactly three quarters. Now what's the new state? So you get the new state by crossing off everything in consistent, so you get rid of the one one. And now we need to renormalize. So, so we take this state and we renormalize it by dividing by the square root of this probability of zero.